thank you so much for the opportunity to be here uh, today. So not only will I be bringing the kind of the business and, and commerce uh, perspective to this conversation, but I, I think I can also bring the perspective of, of a newcomer um, to this conversation as well. So I arrived in the city in 2009 and I didn't live through amalgamation. I didn't live through the the original planning of, of Vision Twenty Twenty. So to me, um, uh, you know, I don't I don't harbor any of uh, you know the um, I, I guess the preconceptions um, or uh, the scars from those types of battles. Um, the so when I arrived here, I it was not under the best of circumstances. I, we were coming from Washington D.C. and. Um, I was looking to switch careers, and of course, in the middle of the worst uh, recession from uh, since the Great Depression, um, and so it was really difficult for me. And, and I was settling in with my uh, my in-laws for a while uh, as we looked to resettle in Canada, um, and uh, as I looked to uh, reestablish my career. And for me, at first, it was it was kind of it was the most emasculating thing that I had ever uh, experienced. Um, uh, and uh, and a bit of an embarrassment that we we're moving back to Hamilton. Um, for me, I had, uh, I did labor under those uh, those horrible preconceptions of what the city is all about. Um, but on the flip side, I had uh, an incredibly revealing experience in uh, in during that September of 2009. First of all, the weather was amazing, and that really helps. It's, I think Hamilton in September is is that's when it's at its best. So it was it was obviously great <laughs> great timing. Um, but uh, it, almost immediately, it, it took me only a couple of weeks, um, I really felt like I was, I was let in on Canada's best kept secret. And somebody referenced earlier uh, this perhaps being Ontario's best kept secret. Well, it, it definitely is Ontario's best kept secret, but I think it's even more than that, Canada's best kept secret. And then thinking of that from an urbanist sort of perspective, I, I love cities. When I go on vacation, I go to cities. Um, and. Uh, uh, when I was looking for a new place to put down my roots and, and raise my kids, um, I didn't want to go to Toronto. I just come from Washington, and you know I don't want to raise my kids in downtown DC. I don't want to raise them in downtown Toronto. I didn't think that there were any alternatives to Toronto, uh, to Montreal, to Vancouver in uh, in this country, and there turns out to be. Um, this amazing city called Hamilton, and uh, I was really lucky that uh, this was the city that my wife was, was born in. Um, and so, you know, we were having a lot of discussions at the time, uh, my wife and I, about, you know, so what, where are we going, what are we doing? And uh, one night, uh, you know, during one of these discussions, I said, well, what about Hamilton? And she looked at me, and I can't uh, totally say exactly what she said, um, but she looked at me and she said, are you friggin' serious? <laughs> and when, you know, for me, like she was born here, but when she left here in 1995, she was never going to come back. And I said, Trish, I think that, you know, if, if you had the opportunity to see what I'm seeing, to meet the people that I'm meeting, um, especially, um, and to also understand where a lot, of, there are, a, seem to be a lot of the opportunities emerging in this city, um, I think that you would, you would feel the same as I did. Um, as I do, and so uh, you know, it was one of those "well, you better make this work" um, sort of moments. And uh, but she gave me the latitude I needed to do it, and and I have I have completely fallen in love with this city uh, ever since. And I am so happy and, and feel so lucky that I get the opportunity every single day to you know exercise leadership um, in helping make this city better. I, I you know the. I never had this opportunity as a lawyer in a, in a large firm. I have purpose and meaning in my life now. I, I think you know all of you, what all of you do um, as well adds to that. And it's really great to know that you know we're not alone. Um, sometimes it feels like it, but these are great gatherings um, that help reinforce the fact that there are a lot of people working on making this city great. So um, for me, what I saw was you know this blank slate. You know, obviously a lot of people see you know. Um, surface parking lots, and we certainly have a lot of them. We have the, surf, you know, the parking lot district um, in downtown. Um, but you know, I envision cranes, um, because what we have here is not green space. What, what we have in downtown is um, the vestiges of something. We, we've lost a lot, but we still have a lot there, and there are real streets there. There are real bones there. And I thought, you know, if the, if the city, and you've got to remember in 2009, 
Uh, we were getting a stadium on the harbor front. Uh, we were getting all these uh, great benefits uh, out of Pan Am. And you know, the talk about LRT, there was no doubt, and there was no uh, naysaying at the time, and LRT was coming, and it was coming by 2015. And so I'm thinking, this is the perfect opportunity to, to get involved in the city. Now, sometimes you know, I get frustrated at the pace of change because you know, obviously we don't have a stadium on the waterfront. Um, uh, obviously, at LRT is, is it, it, it might not happen. I think we just have to, <laughs> We have to recognize that right now that you know there's a really good chance that it won't, and we have to come up with a plan B. Um, but I do have to remember that you know there has been a lot of change uh, since we since I've arrived here. You know, James Street North is continuing to, to go forward um, at an amazing pace. There were no restaurants in James North uh, uh, when I came. Now there's all kinds, and you know, Lock Street, all all these great areas, uh, Ottawa Street. Um, and then, of course, you know, Dundas and Ancaster. I mean, there's still so much going on here, and there's still so much hope um, to believe in. And so, um, but for me, it's, you know, there are too many people in the city, I think, that are okay with the status quo. And we have to do something about that. I, I, have, I wrote on my board in my office, um, don't take status quo for an answer. And what we have to do is, you know, we look at one of the most jarring things I saw when I came here as an outsider is the five lane highways cutting through our downtown. And it does, it, it impacts the city. And we have to understand that how much it is actually impacting commerce and the economy and the vibrancy of the city as well. So that's the type of message I'm trying to bring out to the rest of the, the business community to help them understand that complete streets, um, that uh, other progressive policies aren't about being anti-car, it's about achieving a balance that helps us create the types of environments um, that where businesses flourish and where people flock to. Um, people like me and all the other various newcomers that have fallen in love with this city uh, over the, the last few years that I've met. So, you know, for me, I'm still very, very optimistic. I get a little frustrated at times, um, but uh, we, there is so much potential in the city, and I, I hate using the P word, but it, it's true, and that's exactly what uh, um, brought me here. But what we have to do now is, is so you know, I, I sat through the, the presentation um, with uh, with uh, uh, SPRC and, and Yes We Can and and, uh, and Peter, um, and yes, uh, you know, complete streets is a is an equity issue, it's a safety issue, it's a health issue. But what I'm trying to bring to the table is is uh, is also uh, saying that this is a, a business issue, it's a commerce issue, and I think our greatest potential. We don't have to actually um, get LRT to have uh, to achieve that tremendous amount of growth that I think we could get um, from LRT. We already have that potential. Our our streets have that latent sort of potential to provide that vibrancy that we need. All we have to do is is uh, is find the, bring the balance to um, our downtown, and, uh, and that's where our greatest economic uh, opportunities, uh, economic development opportunities are. And I think that message is starting to resonate. I, I meet with a lot of older gentlemen in the business community who love being able to get from the West End to the East End um, very quickly, and, uh, they, and I, I say to them, okay, so you are a capitalist. Let me put it in, those, in, in these terms. In, in most cities, Maine, King, even Cannon, they should be associated with the highest commercial property values. In our city, it's the exact opposite. So what's the delta there? What are we missing out on in terms of tax revenue? I'll be done in a second. Um, so there's that. Plus, we have 14 BIAs in this community. Some of them are very vibrant, doing amazing, great things. Um, but only one of them comes from Maine, King, and Cannon. You know, Main Street for me, we, oh, Joel, you asked us what sucks. To me, Main Street is what sucks. And symbolically, Main Street is supposed to be the vibrant city, the, 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 the key city that brings, uh, the key uh, uh, street that brings everybody together. And in fact, it's the divider in the city. And Main Street itself should have four, five, six BIAs. And that is commerce, and that is dollars and cents. And what is that? Due to property values, and what does that to do to bring more people downtown? We could easily accommodate another hundred thousand people downtown, and who would be against that? What member of the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce does that not 
uh, impact in a beneficial manner. So that's the type of uh, message that uh, I'm trying to bring uh, to the chamber. And, and in fact, I've, I've started to hear certain people say, you know, you're making sense. You know, when I am driving on the, the on Main Street, I do now look and I do now start to understand what the cause, you know, what the effect is on uh, on my convenience. And so, you know, it's it's happening. We're starting to break through um, some of those uh, those old ideologies. Now we just have to uh, make sure that uh, our leaders, all of our leaders, are understanding um, the new paradigms as well.